my daddy Jake Wilbur. <laughs> This is Cybertronian Beast, and let's talk Transformers. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Regeneration 1, issue number 91. This is the start of something different, because if you remember in issue 90, um, Scorponok had just finished his whole takeover the world Cybertron thing, his mind control-esque mumbo jumbo and that's all done with it's over and for one I am happy about that because it was a crap storyline and uh, yeah I'm happy about that so we're on to bigger and better things now right right let's get on with it um, issue number 91 the cover I picked up is cover A and as you can see, it's got Bludgeon on the front, and he is cutting Cybertron in half. It's a great picture, fantastic artwork. Let's take a look at the other, the other covers. Open it up here. So there is cover. Whoops, there is cover A, and that is done by Andrew Wildman. Cover B, the Guido Guidi cover, is definitely very retro. You've got. Uh, well, Spike uh, Wick Wiki on there with uh, in his Circuit Smasher uh, persona uh, split down the middle with uh, some other dudes and yeah. In the background, you've got uh, Optimus Prime there. Yeah, it's very retro. After reading the book. Um, I honestly have no idea what all of this has to do with anything in the book. So, uh, props to Guido Guidi for a really cool looking cover, but I don't think it really has anything to do with the actual book. Uh, the retail incentive cover uh, shows Galvatron, and it's pretty cool. It's done by Jeff's uh, Senior, or Senior, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a really good cover as well. Anyway, we are taking a look at this, and it is Destiny Part 1. Now, I'm going to try something different with my, uh, with my review of Regeneration 1. And typically, I, for lack of a better word, I, I simply read through the whole book, paraphrasing, uh, page by page. And... It's a huge spoiler, and yeah, um, some people like it, some people hate it. I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to try not to spoil this book. Um, so we'll see how that goes over. All right, so issue 91, we've got it starting off, and just got some kind of battle going on, and... We may not really know what these things are. They kind of look like Insecticons. They kind of look like, you know, they really just look like bugs. Flip to the next page. They're attacking a city, and uh, the inhabitants look humanoid, for sure. Now, what we will uh, know, and what I'll tell you, is that we have seen these uh, bug-like creatures before. Um, if you remember back, I don't remember exactly what issue it was, but, uh, these little bug creatures were seen in, uh, one of the previous issues when Bludgeon, there he is right there, but blam when he was first activated and, uh, was kind of giving Soundwave a tour of his, uh, his little base there. Well, sorry, Bludgeon wasn't activated. I keep thinking of, uh, Thunderwing. Um, so yeah, no, Bludgeon was giving Soundwave a tour of his little base, and he had all of these bug things kind of scattered around some kind of, like, little garage, for lack of a better word, um, just waiting to get used. And, uh, 
he's using them now. He's testing them. He's uh, attacking this city, and uh, they're getting used. So Soundwave is seeing them in their um, in their test, and I guess they're called the they're called Blitz engines, um, and they have uh, self -regener regenerative uh, capabilities. So that's pretty good. These things are pretty powerful. Um, the whole point of these uh, tests is to in is to uh, make sure that they're good enough because Bludgeon expects to take them to Cybertron and uh, and attack Cybertron with them. And there's Thunderwing. And uh, he's looking pretty good actually. He's he's starting to uh, to look almost functional. So we should see Thunderwing pretty soon. Um, getting away from Soundwave and Bludgeon we get back to Cybertron and they call this the morning after. Now, getting back to Scorponok and his whole mind takeover uh, thingamabob, the uh, the inhabitants of, of Cybertron, the population, they're not overly feeling too good about themselves at this moment. Because essentially, they all were cr uh, committing heinous, heinous crimes uh, to each other. And... Now they have a conscience again, and they can remember what they were doing while uh, while they were um, affected by Scorponok's little mind control. So they are, in a sense, they all, the entire population of the planet, uh, feels incredibly guilty. And, uh, well, I don't, actually, I don't think the entire population of the planet got affected. That was the point of the gene key. But uh, everyone that Scorponok had affected, which was quite a bit, um, they all feel very guilty. Uh, getting on, going on, we uh, we see there uh, the Autobots are having some kind of uh, like meeting, uh, discussing you know uh, what happened and. Scorponox effect and blah 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 and Hot Rod is there and he mentions that this um, experience that he had in the bowels of Cybertron um, has caused him to want to go back and that's what he's going to do he's going to to go back he's going to lead a party and the uh, public perception of this idea, this plan that he has, is not overly good. Um, a lot of people really don't like it. They're really against that, especially after the whole Scorponok fiasco. Um, Ultra Magnus, uh, he comes in. Ultra Magnus gives a resounding uh, speech very very motivating to the uh, the Autobot troops um, and uh, gets them um, uh, ready so that they can go out there and and start to uh, start to revitalize Cybertron because it's been pretty decimated um, but after the speech is done he he gets a um, um, he get, he gets a communication from uh, Optimus Prime. So, um, well, actually, he initially he initializes the communication with Optimus Prime, so um, so he can inform him as to what's been happening on Cybertron while he's been on Earth. And he pleads with Prime to tell him to come back, come back to Cybertron because things are as worse as they've ever been, and uh, he doesn't feel confident in Hot Rod's leadership. Take a peek. Let's see. You almost saw it there. What's that? We know what that is. Oh yeah, there it is. Bam. Okay. So I'm not really going to go that far because that's almost to the middle of the book. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, what the meeting or the the uh, the call with Prime says, um, 
Prime uh, tells him to uh, have faith in Hot Rod that he uh, what he's doing needs to be supported at at all costs, and that uh, he will not be coming back to Cybertron. And yeah, he he feels that the um, it's very interesting here. Now I have not completed my uh, my Marvel run, so I don't know if this is true or not. But he says that uh, he's much more concerned with the arc and the the being we know as Galvatron. Deep in my spark, he knows. Let's see if I can get it up here at the top without showing you guys too much. That he is Megatron Reborn. So, that's about all I'm going to give you. See if I can flip through to the ads at the back for the new books coming out, because those are always fun. I like those. But I, I really, I did like this book. It was, um, it was pretty good. So here we go with next, uh, next month's um, teaser. So there is... Uh, there's that. Some, uh, what are those, Pretenders? I don't remember. Those last few seasons of, or last few, few episodes of G1 and, and definitely Headmasters, they were just crazy. Um, Robots in Disguise, number 17. Awesome picture of Shockwave. Really good picture of Shockwave. Uh, More Than Meets the Eye, number 17. Both of these books, Robots in Disguise and More Than Meets the Eye, are phenomenal reads right now. Uh, if you're not reading these books, read them. Definitely read them, because they are fantastic. And only up to issue 17, I mean, you can catch up if, you're not, uh, if you haven't read them yet. It's not a lot of reading to do. 17 issues is not a, it's not a lot. And there's that, a little bit of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, the IDW Limited stuff. That stuff is crazy expensive, but really awesome. Like, really, really awesome. So, if you've got one of those, kudos, because those are really cool, and I envy you. Um, exclusive covers, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? Transformers Beast Wars, or sorry, <laughs> Transformers Prime Beast Hunters are coming back. There was a four-issue miniseries, um, and uh, it followed the Dinobots around. And now we're getting a comic book, and it's going to be an ongoing. Should be starting very soon, actually. So it says it starts May 2013. And that's where we are right now. Ninja Turtles, City, City Fall, Part 1. So that's what I'm going to do. That's all I'm doing for this this issue. There is a lot more in this issue. So if you uh, if you want to read this issue, definitely pick it up. Um, there is a, a lot more to uh, to get covered in this in this book that I did not touch on, and uh, I highly recommend uh, doing so. I'll give you a, a, a slight hint. One of the uh, characters that makes an appearance first appeared in the G2 comic. That's the tip I'll give you. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the, in the uh, thread here on the video. Uh, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. Not only will you get all the videos about my Regeneration 1 uh, comic book reviews, but you'll also get all my Transformer figure reviews. And, uh, and any of the uh, reviews that I do on the uh, Transformers Legends video game or anything else coming up, Transformers. we got a new movie coming out in the next little while. Get, I might do some talking about that. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so, at CybertronBeast. And um, you can follow me on Facebook as well. Just search Cybertronian Beast on Facebook. That'll be me. And uh, you can follow me there. Post all kinds of pictures. And uh, all my videos are on there as well. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Cybertronian Beast, and I will talk to you later.